In the Revishal Citizens Militia, there is only one Officer Superstar. This is his story. Now, injuries. Ligature mark. Finish the autopsy. Wait, turn the page back. Let's try that. The corpse lay slouched to the side, oblivious to its surroundings. The field autopsy form describes his state in three parts. Okay, we're going to try this in the Empire. Check again. Here we go. Tell me, who are you, dead man? I'm gone. We succeeded! I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. You are now, but who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Takes one to know one. I have another question for you. Go ahead, Cobo. Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. And where is that? In the past. Way out in the west. I can't get the damn compartment in my ledger open. The blue heart. Oh, that's good shit. You'll love it. Just press down and fuck it open like you always do. This is uh, pretty aggressive. It's like we're being browbeaten by the hanged man's corpse. Fuck it on. Kopopo the Clown. <laughs> wow, okay. Kopopo the Clown. He means force. It'll work. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Physical Instrument. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Black, frothy liquid starts bubbling on his lips. Imagination. Oh, well, good. We have a very well-developed imagination because we are Officer Superstar. Go ahead. Ask me more questions. You fucking love questions. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a cop -roony. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Oh, hell yes. Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, cop -roony, roony Wow. This is getting up me now. Let's try who killed you. Love did me in Brother Copo. It was love all along. Kills us all. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. I do strike myself as a Rooney. <laughs> no, you don't. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. Yeah, it probably is. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Yeah, we've forgotten our past life. Maybe even on purpose. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Because I don't have anything else to do. This case is all I have. I am all you have. Then you truly lost it all, brother. Let the world drag it all away from you. And what it left, you pissed away. Yeah, yeah. And here we are. Yeah, but you know what? I hate you. You stink and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? Yes, yes you do. A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. Yeah, I don't think we're going to admit this to ourselves. A baby affected with harlequinism. You sure are good out of that one? Coppolini. Thank you, me. Enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dream. What it says here is very different than what the narration said, but equally disturbing. I realized I left too quickly that we didn't finish the field autopsy. The rotting man lies on his side with his eyes looking straight through you. Bits of cargo belt lie on the ground around him. His body is supine and open to intrusion by autopsy. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. 
So under description of injuries, I think there was something else. All right. Bite marks, yeah. contusions on head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. Yeah, this is it. Ligature mark. Let's finish the autopsy. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical colon intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Let's write that down. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. So we get two choices, fatal injury or non-fatal post-mortem. And we're going to say non-fatal post-mortem. Hmm. Why do you say that? I'm serious. I don't think this was the injury that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? We actually went through this in an earlier episode that we don't like the coloration. The lividity did not convince us. Also, why weren't his hands tied? Is It would be a good one. But we're going to say I don't like the coloration because we knew that. Most everything else on the victim says otherwise. But I agree. I was ready to establish a cause of death here, officer. But now I think we should leave it empty. At least for the time being. Agreed. Let's wrap this up. I pronounce this field autopsy over. Okay, we finished the field autopsy, got another 70 experience, and we leveled up again. Let's ask him first, how did it go? It was a, an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death, which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But personally... I do not see this as a parameter for success. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. Okay, we are a professional. Oh yeah, well done, Master Detective. Maybe a drink is in order? Yes, perhaps a drink is in order. Later, I mean. Now, you see, that worries me. You will die if you drink. You know that, don't you? You are proving a useful detective. The organization would miss you. I think Kim has taken a liking to us. It does make me wonder about that task we have to get booze and drink it. I wonder if that'll mm. be game ending. What now? We ask. I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. Okay, let's rip out a copy of the autopsy pages. For processing. You tilt your head, also looking at the corpse. This is in response to Kim looking at the dead man one more time. Then the slip of red paper and then at the corpse again. Hmm. 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 I'm sure we didn't get everything. There's always something. I think that's a giant hint. We have basically no chance here with our perception. And we're taking a giant chance here, but it's a white check, so we can try it again. I'm also not real comfortable with bagging him because then we can't ever get the boots off of him. And I don't want to remove the boots while Kim is here. So let's try this. Even though it's 8%, we'll see. We've got enough to heal ourselves, even if we lose morale. Here we go. And you run your hands morale. over the victim's cold body, his limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. All right, let's look under his fingernails like Kim already did. His fingernails have turned dark. They're chipped and quite long. There is dirt under them. That's all. Do you think we missed something? Yes, there's something we're not seeing. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination, and we need to do it fast. Oh, well, we happen to know where a refrigerator is. Hey, wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below that building? I believe there was. Thank you, Kim. Why, yes, there was. It was massive. Red eyes glowing in the dark. An absolutely colossal fridge, still plugged in, literally in the shape of an ice bear. Yes. Now, I've rarely been disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge. But I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. I think that makes sense. Plus, how are we going to move him? His knees are going to fall apart. It's going to be really nasty. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become harder to find. Agreed, Kim. I think we should try and refrigerate the body. Oh, wait. We have a skill point to spend. So let's go do that. I think this time we're going to do perception. See, hear, and smell everything. Let no detail go unnoticed. 
Cool for fine detail detectives, sensualists, urban scavengers. Perception wants you to be open to the world with eyes, ears, and nose working at full capacity. It enables you to take in what others don't notice. The little wad of bills hid away in the sugar bowl, the odor of a perp hiding beneath the floorboards, the gulp of a suspect after claiming they've nothing to hide. At high levels, perception takes in every fine detail of the physical world, enough to overwhelm all but the strongest mind. However, with low levels, you're going to miss out on everything. After all, you can't arrest what you can't see, hear, or smell. That seems like makes sense. I think this is consistent with Officer Superstar's historical performance as a detective. So we're going to go ahead, as he sobers up more, we're going to go ahead and embrace that. Let's level up. We now have a perception of three. All right, let's go check out the fridge. There is the fridge. In all its glory. The beer's eyes are still glowing red watching over all the ice cream wrappers hidden inside its belly. So what do you think of this fridge, Kim? It looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough, too. Well, I'm glad we didn't unplug it before. Your visual confirms you could fit two more bodies in the ice beer fridge. I wonder if we'll have more bodies to put in there. Shall we go and get the body, then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. We're going to take the feet where all the gross body juices have flowed into nasty but maybe the boots will come off the two of you easily okay let's do this the body is heavier than you expected and stinkier it takes half an hour to get it down to the basement then 10 more minutes to stuff it into the fridge the lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork Okay, how disgusting, but also I am happy that we didn't have to do it ourselves. Beautiful. A dead body in a nice bare fridge. This is some of the best body's work I've ever done. <laughs> Kim. You have created an ice bear sarcophagus. Ooh, an ice bear sarcophagus. Oh, you can see the body in there now. That's cool. You've definitely earned a drink after this. Perhaps even some pagan rights oh physical instrument is really pushing us here let's ask physical instrument really you think it's good work no not really oh look at that what have we done we stuffed a dead body in a nice bare fridge this story does not leave this room i thought we were asking physical instrument we were actually asking kim yeah i agree with kim this is a little bit embarrassing for cops who actually want to feel like they're good at their jobs this isn't police work, Kim. It's art. We're artists, and this was our vision. If I were an artist, this would certainly not be my vision. I would be much, much more conservative in my work. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all. He's right. His work would be much more formal. All right, it's unanimous. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Very nice. Very nice. I don't know if we're going to do that right away, though. Inside the icy realm of the ice beer fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Now when we do this, search the body one more time thoroughly, we got an extra two points because we refrigerated the body. So now we're up to 42. But 42, as much as it is the answer to life, the universe, and everything, it has not been our answer to anything except how to die. So we're going to wait a moment. Shoot, Looney Rooney. Okay, so we're talking to the hangman again. How do you like it in the fridge? I like it a lot, brother. This really is your finest hour. You're a genius. A regular Coppolangelo. I am really glad you think so. I certainly agree. Like we said, artist. Okay, nothing else here? Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dream. I have no doubt we'll see you in our dreams. I also think you like to say memento mori. Okay, we close the door. Oh, we had a thought. Why does art inspire you so much? We could say, no, art is for arrogant blowhards. Why am I getting this thought? But but we're not going to do that because we've pushed actually on the art angle. It does, yes, but what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination 
and technical skill. Additionally, its history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Oh yeah, I, I like that description. That's a good description. Would I fit into the art world? I mean... Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have the exact features of a savage art critic with that beard and those clothes, disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture too. Yes, I definitely think we should. Let's uh, confirm. Hold on, is architecture also art? Of course not. It's autism. Box drawing. <laughs> Masturbation with a ruler and a sextant, or whatever they use. You should demean and criticize the genteel institution of architecture while extolling the virtues of the pure arts. Okay, all right, maybe. Maybe architecture is not an art form. But what about music? Is that art? Only the most experimental kind. These answers are so good. This That's stupid. Architecture stupid. Music is stupid. I don't think we believe that. We're jonesing to sing karaoke. I guess I have been feeling critical lately. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representations and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Oh, we're going art, baby. Exactly. It's not only your duty to only catch the criminals of the street, you must also apprehend criminals of the printing press and the gallery, the trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. We got a new thought. We'll check it out in a minute. Actually, we can check it out right now, I think. Here we go. Actual art degree. Temporary research bonus of minus one perception. Can't even look at this shit. And it takes an hour and a half. Actual art degree. Yeah, it's another copper type. The worst one. The most savage and brutal, the art cop. Nothing is good enough for him. Everything is shit. You have to employ an armada of adjectives to depict and demean the mediocrity of the works and visual institutions around you. Really flex that critical muscle. Pushing the vocabulary for punishing mediocrity becomes second nature. Here we go. That sounds sufficiently ridiculous that we might have to do it. We're going to run out of thoughts because I'm having such a good time here. Let's continue from here. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. I love it. Let's rip it to pieces. Since we're in the building, let's go get our dice. I'm hoping we'll be able to come up with another almost nine real before the end of the day, or we're going to be in trouble. Hello, dice maker. Give us our dice. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? First, I have more questions about the building. I'm listening. I have more questions about the intercom. I'm pretty sure it still doesn't work, but sure. What do you want to know? A strange thing happened when I tried calling a company named Slipstream SCA. Someone answered. It can't be true. They don't work here anymore. They've been gone for years. Yeah, well, that's what I thought. Are you sure it was Slipstream SCA? Was it a woman? Maybe it was Plaisance from the bookstore. We know it wasn't Plaisance. We know her and would have recognized her voice. But sure, let's say that. Oh, right. But did this person say anything? She said she was from Tricentennial Electrics. Tricentennial Electrics? It used to be a major electric company 100 years ago. Are you sure it wasn't just some kids playing a prank on you? Yeah, we're pretty sure, lady. It was too real to be just a prank. Either we're dealing with a professional actress or... Whatever happened, keep your cool. It's probably better to admit that it was a harmless prank. No, I'm not going to say that. We're going to say it was something else, something eerie. We're an art cop. Pranks can be eerie. She looks as if she's still convinced it's nothing to be worried about. Oh, the kids these days. We were just one of them, and now they're terrorizing us. No solidarity. What? I don't know about that. So you're telling me that the doorbell with the empty name card was yours? That's right. I haven't even written my name there. As I said, it's quite useless right now. It doesn't work yet. See, I don't understand this. She's been here the longest, yet her doorbell doesn't work? That is so strange. I hope it clarified things a bit. What else? What else is I came back to pick up my die. Excellent. That will be 10 real for one set of magnetic dies. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. This was an especially fun set to make. We got 10 experience for finishing that task, which seems like not very much experience for spending all that real. 
Let's look at our dice. Dazzling. It's like you have a pair of tiny disco balls in your hand. Very nice. Very nice. Tiny disco balls is right up our alley. Let's take a look at them. The magnetic dice set. They're only worth a buck or one real. We spent ten. These hundred-sided dice are made of ivory and inland with magnetic lodestone. When rolled together, pips on the dice interact with each other by pulling and pushing, just like magnetic personalities. Note, look at the map tab and journal to see which white checks have opened. Wait, what? We got more white checks? Ooh, ooh very nice. Well, I don't know. I don't know what was open and what wasn't. Wait, this one we don't even need. We already have the cloak. Wow, like many of these are open. I guess it opened them for us. I think we're going to go talk to Call Me Manana because I want to find out more about that armor. Oh, wait, I think the the dice opened the white check again on this thing. It's physical instrument. So let's put on our physical instrument shirt. Yes, we now have five. Okay, let's try it. Here we go. Let's see what our percentage is. The barbell waits patiently on the floor like a dog for its master. Oh, it looks like our gloves are helping. I didn't think they gave us physical instrument, but okay. We have enough that if we wound our morale again, we'll be okay. If we wound it twice, we're dead. Let's try it. Oh, we succeeded. Watch us do this CrossFit action. Oh yeah. Conjuring up an inhuman amount of strength, you raise the barbell up in the air. Your biceps tremble, but you're a savage. This is a children's game. I am a true champion. Look at us! Oh, yes! Slamming it to the ground. A warm wave of accomplishment washes over your head as you drop the barbell to the floor. For a moment, it feels like you're strong enough to succeed at anything you ever set your mind to. We did a full-on clean and jerk there. That was awesome. Good technique. Well, thank you so much, Kim. That's nice of you to say. All right, let's move on from here. Well, that was extremely satisfying. Let's put our disco shirt back on because we can't be caught dead in this stupid tank top. <laughs> 